Hey guys. How's everyone doing? Chat just die. There we go. Hey everybody. Not quite sure how tonight's gonna go down. Thought I'd try something different when it comes to Let's Mod. And uh, a lot of people have been waiting for it, and I haven't done a video since uh, before the wedding. So it's been a month ago. Figured it was time to do something. And uh, I'm having a cup of coffee out of my uh, Disney mug. Yeah. Thought we'd uh, kind of reboot this. Start off with. Uh, starting from scratch with uh, doing a mod for Minecraft Forge for uh, Minecraft 1.6. I don't know why I'm talking in such a voice. I guess it has to do with the music that's playing in the background. Hope everyone's uh, been good since I've been gone. Talking a bit like Kirk. If you're wondering, the music is from Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded from the game music bundle pack. So yeah, let's get started. So, for people who don't know, I am on GitHub. Uh, it's github.com slash pahamar. You'll be able to find the Let's Mod Mod project there. Just load that up. So right now, it, uh, it really doesn't have anything in it. And uh, we're going to make some changes to that today. So if you're interested in cloning it for yourselves, the uh, URL for doing as such is in GitHub, always in the uh, bottom right corner of the page. My mouse is going crazy around it right now. So I thought we'd start from scratch again, because I, uh, I got some good feedback from my Dev Environment 3.0 video for Minecraft 1.6, and I think I've simplified it a little bit further. And uh, we'll go from there. So, and I did have this all prepped and everything. I swear to you, I had this prepped. So inside of, uh, as usual, I got myself a development directory. I should really start from the beginning, shouldn't I? Inside the development directory, we have API, uh, we have Eclipse, which is our Eclipse workspace, Forge, which is uh, where all of our MCP and Forge related stuff is, and then Source is where a nice directory you can stick your source code. And yeah, I have it. You can't have it, but I have it. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to start from scratch. So you see that nice Eclipse workspace? Boom. Gone. Starting from scratch. First thing you do when you start from scratch is you load up Eclipse. So I'm going to do a couple things differently than I've done in previous videos. Uh, namely, we're not going to use Smart Git for Git. I'm going to show you how to use the built-in Eclipse workspace. Uh, sorry, the built-in Eclipse uh, Git workings. Uh, no dropped frames, uh, so just maybe downgrade your settings. So yeah, I am using Eclipse Kepler. I happen to be using the Java EE version because I do do web development. Um, yes, this will be going on YouTube after the fact. Uh, hopefully I can figure out how to edit, otherwise it's going to be a very, very funny video for all you YouTubers, uh, YouTube viewers who are watching right now. Hi, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm really hoping this turns out well, so hello. So, using Eclipse Kepler, the Java EE version, you're fine with just the the Eclipse Kepler Java version. You don't need EE. EE's got a ton of other stuff for it. I happen to be using it because I have a work reason for doing it. You don't have to. It's if you decide to go for it, go for it. That's awesome. But anyway, I'm gonna maximize this. Close up the Welcome tab, and we are in our default view. I'm actually, because I'm in EE, I'm, gonna, I'm in the Java EE perspective, I'm going to close that. 
So we're gonna go. We're gonna open the Java perspective. Clip has all these different pre-configured uh, perspectives. Basically, what they are is they're just a collection of views. So the package explorer is a view, the task list is a view, the outlines a view, blah 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 blah. For the 99% of you, when you open up Eclipse for the first time, this is what you'll see. We're going to open up another view right now, though. We're going to go to Window, Perspective, Other. We're going to select Git Repository Exploring. This is the built-in Git functionality with Eclipse. Oh, I don't want to really get into workspaces, Hef. Eclipse workspaces are basically just, um, they're like a work area for a bunch of projects. So a workspace can contain multiple projects inside of it. The nice thing is, is that you can actually um, flip between different workspaces. So you could have a workspace for Minecraft 1.6 and 1.5 and 1.4 if you wanted. Uh, in this case, we're only going to do for the current. So yeah, back to the, uh, the Git window here. What we're going to do is we are going to clone in a remote repository. And the one we're actually going to do isn't this one. I'm going to go back to my repository list and what I've done is I've actually created a Minecraft Eclipse project, project in GitHub. And what it has is it has all the um, class path settings set up for you. So you can just import this into your Eclipse and it'll start up the Minecraft project for you. So you won't have to do, um, you won't have to set up all those libraries. So we're gonna clone it from this HTTPS clone URL. Just gonna control C to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here. And you'll see it fills in all that detail. Um, you don't need to worry about this authentication stuff. Just hit next. It's going to say that, oh, hey, there's only uh, one branch. It's the master branch. Hit next. And I'm going to point this. Not my C drive. I'm going to point it at my Eclipse folder in here. I'm actually going to put it in here, and I'm going to name it just Minecraft. And I'm going to import all existing projects after clone finishes. So I'm going to hit finish. It's going to clone it in right here. You're going to notice a Minecraft project in Eclipse. And it's already going to point to my already uh, installed Forge and decompiled MCP. It's going to point to it already. It's already got pointers to all of the uh, libraries. And short of setting up a run configuration, uh, you're good to go. So, yeah, this is my vastly simplified uh, way of getting a new Minecraft uh, project set up inside of an Eclipse workspace. If anyone has questions about that, I'll take that from chat right now, though. Because I need a sip of coffee. I'm seeing a lot of talk about video quality. Can I maybe repeat that? Okay. You load up Eclipse. You go to the Git Repository Exploring perspective. You're going to clone in this project of mine. So it's under github.com slash Palmar Minecraft Project Eclipse. You'll find an HTTPS clone URL in the bottom right. You're going to copy that URL. So you can clone it into Eclipse. And at the end of it, you're going to want to import the project. <laughs> if the project didn't show up, you probably didn't import it. In which case, inside the Git Repository Exploring window, you can right click on the uh, repository and you can go to Import Projects. And you want to import existing projects. Uh, this is a Keurig Starbuck whatever. It's a medium roast. So yeah, that is how um, 
in the future I'm going to be setting up the Minecraft project once I've already done the Forge install. Uh, the Forge install is going to be the same as ever. Um, the reason it works this way is the, uh, the setup of the Minecraft project assumes that the Forge directory is in the same directory as the Eclipse workspace. That's how this works. Hey Rock, I am. I'll uh, I'll keep trying to focus on that. So, if you're not sure on how to install uh, Forge, uh, watch my Dev Environment 3.0. But essentially, uh, you download the source from uh, files.minecraftforge.net. You'll extract them into some development directory, and then you'll run install dot whichever applies to your work, uh, your particular operating system. If you are mixing my development environment setup with VSWEs, um, you can actually set them up in separate workspaces if that works for you. The other thing I want to point out is there is a default workspace that comes with Forge. I've been meaning to point this out for many, many episodes. I keep missing it. So if you want to find it, go to Switch Workspace, Other, Browse, Look into the Forge directory, look into MCP, and you'll find an Eclipse directory there. This is a working Eclipse workspace for Minecraft. The reason I do my own environment like this is I can easily update Forge without losing my Eclipse environment, which is something I do if I stick with the Forge provided one. So, to say it again, if you stick with the Forge provided Eclipse workspace, every time you update Forge, you could lose your Eclipse environment. My way keeps it away from that. So you see it's set up much the same. If I actually go back to the similar view. So here, you'll find it looks very similar. The difference for this though, is it does have the uh, the run configurations for the client and server already set up. Any questions about the Forge Eclipse workspace and how I set up my own? What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cheat because if you're ever not sure how to set up uh, the run environments, look at the Forge provided one. Everything's set up there. And there's the phone. I'll be right back. I'm sorry about that, folks. That was Mrs. Pahamar, and I cannot miss a call like that. So, ooh, what am I doing? What am I doing? There we go. All right, where was I? I was sneakily copying over the uh, program arguments from the Forge version. I'll explain these uh, when we get to the other one. Then yeah, that's that. Okay, we're gonna switch back to our original workspace. Well, Ash, uh, Mrs. Palmar's at work, so uh, potty kids aren't happening currently. All right, so we still have our, uh, our Minecraft project. We're going to add the run configurations. So we're going to add a new Java application. It is for the Minecraft project. The main class. is Launch. So launch is a, uh, a launch wrapper that uh, Minecraft CPW wrote. It basically uh, acts as a wrapper to launch Minecraft. So now we're going to add in these uh, program arguments. So basically what these do is these are uh, arguments that get passed into the, uh, the launch wrapper. So uh, this says the version's 1.6. The tweak class is FML tweaker. 
Sorry, as I make sure my dog doesn't go nuts and kill your ears and RIP headphone users. And the other one you can add in, that's not in by default, is the username one. A lot of people have been asking about this. So if you want to specify your username, it is just dash dash username space and then your username. I'll show that to you working in a moment. The VM arguments are basically just the uh, the Java arguments you'll pass. Uh, so this says that we're going to use incremental garbage collection and the maximum and minimum uh, heap size is one gigabyte. Then we're also going to say uh, what the working directory is, which is um, in the jars folder. So we're going to hit apply. Oh, I should name that. I like to name these so that I know if they're modded or not modded. So no mods. Apply and run, just to make sure things work. The wrapper has always had a username argument. It's, uh, it's been there since the get-go. So you see, we'll, we're loaded in. Uh, I happen to have a world still there. And yeah, we'll ignore that because I turfed my old one. So there we go. Look at that. It's me, Pahamar. So that's what happens when you specify the username. You'll actually enter the game as uh, that user. Uh, for the person who just asked, asked, the uh, working directory is uh, just the same as the default, but slash jars. I am not, in fact, blar, uh, blonde. Blar? What's blar? Blar. All right. So now we need to do a new run configuration because this one is for the server. Now it's again, server, no mods. The project is Minecraft. And the main class... This one's going to be different. This one is server launch wrapper. This one has no program arguments. It has the same VM arguments and it has the same working directory. So by the two of them having the same working directory, it means that the, the worlds uh, here will also be there for the client. So I'm just gonna hit run, just to make sure the server works. And you'll see that uh, the Minecraft server starts up. Ash, you should have done the pizza while I was on the phone. There are no program arguments for server. If you would like to know uh, what I've set these as, you can reference the Forge provided Eclipse workspace. MCP is something external of Eclipse. Um, if you go to my YouTube and watch Dev Environment 3.0, uh, that video is still accurate in terms of how to set up Forge. I haven't done it here because Forge can take uh, several minutes to install and I feel like that's a bit of dead air. And I'm a hypocrite for saying that because I took a phone call for five minutes. So I'm just going to stop the Minecraft server. So there we go. And I just want to make sure of something because this will become important later on. That's true. Okay. So now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to clone in other projects. So we'll go back to my repositories. So what I'm going to show you now is how to get other projects into your Eclipse. So for example, we'll start with a personal favorite of mine, Equivalent Exchange 3, the open source um, successor to Equivalent Exchange 2. So. Similar to how we cloned in the Minecraft project, I'm going to grab the clone URL for Quillen Exchange 3 in the bottom right here. I'm going to come back to my clips. I'm going to go to the Git repository exploring window. I'm going to clone a Git repository. It's already picked it up from my clipboard. Uh, myself, because I am the uh, owner of this project. I'm going to authenticate myself, but you don't have to. I'm just doing this for my own case, but all you need to worry about is the URI, 
the host and the repository path. You're going to see all the different branches. Just hit next. I'm once again going to put it in the uh, Eclipse workspace here. So Eclipse equivalent exchange three. I'm going to import all existing projects after clone finishes. Could hit finish and let's get a run. There we go. If we come back to the Java view, we will now see an equivalent exchange three project. It's all the code. So a couple others that I always like to have because they're great examples is Buildcraft and Iron Chest. So this is the Buildcraft one. Once again, grab the clone URI. Come back to Eclipse and to Git Repository Exploring. I'm going to go quickly here because I've done this twice now. Clone, next, next, put it in the proper directory, import, finish. As you see, now we have a Minecraft, an equivalent exchange three, and a buildcraft. So when you uh, when you do it this way, you'll notice, uh, particularly with Billcraft and Iron Chest, you'll notice a exclamation point there, and you'll notice a project Billcraft is missing required Java project forge. I'll show you how to fix this. Properties, Java build path, and you'll notice when you go to the projects tab for the Java build path. So the projects tab, when you're looking at the properties of a Java project. This is where you can specify what other projects are necessary for this to work. So you can see, you can't find the Forge one. The Forge one is the Minecraft one. So we're going to remove that one, and we're going to add the Minecraft one. Hit OK. Eclipse will rebuild the workspace. And now it's working. So we're going to go back to GitHub, to Iron Chest. Going to copy the clone, add a new one, next, next. I'm antsy about camel casing, well not camel casing, but I'll add it to the uh, workspace, import all existing projects, finish. There we go, now we have an iron chest too. And similar to Buildcraft, we're going to get that same error. We can also fix it here. There's a faster way to go to the build path settings too, because I know someone's going to point it out. Right click on the project, build path, configure build path. You'll see, well, on the projects tab, it's missing forge. Remove forge, add Minecraft. Oh, yes, an iron chest will always complain because there's some files in here that CBW doesn't supply. So you want to get rid of the MC mod info and version properties. Just delete those. They don't actually exist. That's what this error is saying is that I can't find them. So there we go. Now we have Buildcraft, Coolant Exchange 3, and Iron Chest 2. You don't have to do this. I like to do this because I like to have them as reference material. Uh, Tataric, probably because you haven't set up Forge and MCP, you're just setting up the Eclipse workspace. Uh, once again, um, if to set up Forge and MCP, please watch Dev Environment 3.0. So now we are going to bring in the Let's Mod project. Same as all the other ones. Grab the clone URL. Git. Clone. There it is because we're going to be making commits to it. I'm going to authenticate myself. And there we go. So you'll notice that this one didn't create a uh, project in here, and that's because I haven't committed the Eclipse uh, settings for it. Tarek, did you install MCP or MCP and Forge? To go over how to install Forge, because I guess that's going to be necessary since some people are having problems with it on the stream. 
And I have a dog who wants to go outside, so we'll make this quick. Go to files.minecraftforge.net. I'm going to delete this forge folder just to show you. Which means we will have another commercial break. To Tarek, MCP does not install Forge. Forge installs MCP. So I'm going to grab the latest 162. I'm going to download the source. I'm going to save the file. In a second, we'll get a notification. There it is, it's downloaded. And I'm going to extract the Forge folder that's inside of that zip file into my development directory. So into the same directory as the Eclipse workspace. So there we go, there's Forge. Now you go into it, install dot command, and we'll let that run while I make sure my dog uh, gets to go outside. So this will take a few moments. <laughs> 